I want you guys to do a drill wrap. Oh, I'm by Nick for this one. Where Nick's going to be working his escapes, but like, I, there's no reason at all that I would ever need to apply the armbar. Basically, if I get Nick's arm extended and I can hold it for three seconds, right? Say Nick tries a turning escape, he's stuck, he tries to sit up, he's stuck. That's enough that now Nick will tap and I've won the exchange. I, we, I don't need to pop his elbow. You know what I mean? There's going to be no circumstance unless obviously Nick's really pissed me off that I'm going to have to uh, fully extend the armbar, right? A lot of people have a misunderstanding in the gym and when the guys hit turning escapes on them, they think, oh, it's because I didn't rip it on. You know what I mean? If you can't control their movement, you can't break their arm. No armbar breaks come while Nick's still wiggling around. Nick's hitting a hard turning escape. I'm never breaking it here. The break happens when Nick stops for a sec or I control his movement and then I extend through. So I want you guys to practice armbar escapes, right? So take whatever grip, let's, but let's experiment with the extended arms, right? So let's not uh, take a reinforced grip at the start here. So if Nick grabs his own bicep, places his hand under, let's not start here because these escapes we'd probably be using uh, to create stacks or obviously if Nick could get a knee under my knee. We're going to be talking about later stage defense. So let's start here. But again, you don't need to worry because you're probably you're going to tap and the other guy's not going to, not going to break your arm. So this is how you'll be able to develop this movement. This is why Nick's so good at this because me and Nick have had many exchanges where I've extended his grip and we're playing out of here for a long time. You see, he's constantly moving. I'm constantly trying to find a way to stick onto the leg. But again, even if I were trying to break Nick's arm, it wouldn't happen while he's moving and transitioning all the time. And obviously we've worked out that if we initiate the grip break, we have a much greater chance of hitting a turning escape. And also because you know your training partner's not gonna break your arm, you don't need to just sit here squeezing, holding as tight as possible. You can dictate when to go. And then we can try to hit a turning escape. We can try to sit up. If we sit up and they try to lock it under the armpit, we can rip our arm out. But again, no one's elbow should be popped under any circumstances here. Like you shouldn't even be able to pop your own elbow by making a bad decision. We get it to full extension. If we hold it for three seconds, they can't move. We'll call that a tap. But again, even in this specific circumstance, even if we hold it for three seconds, but you feel like he's still getting quite a bit of movement and you're having to track and replace that and control it, just keep going a bit. Just feel it out. See if you can actually control someone's arm. You should, it, the guy didn't get out because you weren't trying to break it. The guy got out because you couldn't control his movement in the armbar. So again, for the sake of the drill, you, the attack, both you guys are trying to win, but the attacker is not trying to break the arm. He's trying to control the arm. And the defender is trying to find ways to create movement to relieve pressure on the elbow. So that, again, turning escape and sit up. Alternate back and forth out of those two, and you will eventually, hopefully, be able to find a way out. All right, guys, three, two, one. <laughs> 